Hey, welcome back. Exciting times ahead, right? Tons of new features are coming out in the new Elemental 3.5 Beta. Beta, Beta, Beta. And there are lots of new features or features that we kind of can do within CSS coding or maybe using an additional plugin. But the fact that these are now going to be available within Elemental, this is brilliant. So the Beta Beta has come out for us to do testing and we're going to go through some of these in this video. Of course, things may change in a week or two's time once it's gone through all of its tweaks and once it's officially out there. But this is great, great stuff. And I'm going to be showing you that right now. So some of the features are text stroke, word spacing, marking your widgets as favorites, multi-select and dragging from the desktop. I cannot wait to test this out. And by the way, I haven't even installed 3.5 though. So any of you out there who don't know how to do a beta beta version, this is what you need to do. Now I will give you one warning. Don't do this on your official website. So if you've got only one elemental site, don't do it on that because things might break. What you really want to do is use a staging site or a local site or something like that. Do not do it on your official, official, official website, basically. OK, so what we've got to do is we do have to ensure that we have Elemental Pro 3.5, which we have, but we need to get Elemental 3.5 Beta 1. So to get it, you've got to go to tools. Well, WordPress Elemental tools, go to version control and then scroll down until you get to like beta beta tester. I'm going to say beta beta because like I, I always feel like, you know, data, data, data. This is my test website, by the way. So please ignore all of the plugins that you see on here. This is just where I start to test things out. OK, so 3.5 is officially available. So we're going to get that now. So we're going to update that. And that's what you do. Get the beta version in your tools, enable it. And then all of these beta versions become available to you. Um, you know, again, like I said, do not do it on your real site. Do it on a test site only. OK, the first thing we're going to test out is the in fact, the first thing we're going to test out is the CSS transform. So we're on our blank page. It's got a box width there. It's in the center. And we're going to drop in a header and I'm going to leave that as it is. Add your heading text here. If we go to advanced. Transform is now there. This is new. This was not a, a previously there for us in Elemental. And we now have functionality like rotate, offset, scale, skew, flip horizontal, flip vertical. Flip horizontal and flip vertical is brilliant. And I'll tell you why in a moment when we get to it. And we also have something, we also have them activated when you do hover. Now, when we go to rotate, I mean, look at that. It is rotating. Okay. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to just stick an image in there. Go to advanced, go to transform, go to rotate. And yet we have the rotate function there as well. Let's just get rid of that one to keep it clean. So it's working st like straight out of the bag. Super, super simple. What about though if we reset it and we go to hover and I then put in a hover rotation? Let's just go with 70, 83. It should go to it should go that way. And it does. I mean, there's a, there, there was a bit of a stutter there. And I will actually say that. Every time you do any hover effect, even motion effects or scrolling effects, sometimes if you move your mouse over to it, there is always a little bit of a stutter there. So there is a bit of a stutter there. I hope that gets ironed out if it's possible to iron out. But it is still really good. The fact that you can have something which will move when you hover. So let's say you've got a ball or a circle or a logo or something on your website. As the user moves around, if they act, if they happen to scroll on it with their mouse or their finger, it will animate and move. So there's a little bit of like discrete interactivity added into your website. We have the offset. What's the offset do? So the the X offset is not doing anything there. Neither is the Y. Oh, sorry, we're on hover. Of course. Sorry. Ignore me. Back to normal. The offset. So that's now OK. So this now means that you can offset things without where previously you would have gone to your advanced and your margin or your padding and you start rearranging things around. We can now just do that using this functionality here. Offset again with the hover, you could hover over something and it moves. I mean, this is quite a neat feature when you think about it. You could have two elements, right? You could have a text box which with a background color over another image. And when you hover over it, the text word moves and the image is revealed or you have the image and the image moves and the text is revealed. 
See what I mean? So this is now removing the fact that I used to put in quite a bit of CSS coding to make that happen. This will now do it for you. And I think that's really, really cool. What about scaling? Well, yeah, okay. Again, you could have a hover effect where when you hover over it, it now scales up for you, like a grow effect. Again, a really, really neat feature. No need for CSS coding. Skew. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I, I sometimes I feel like you could overdo certain features and I would say maybe if you want to skew certain images, I mean that, if you imagine, you could create almost like a 3D effect going on there, right? So with a bit of careful play, you could make that look really, really cool for you. Again, on the hover effect, you could hover over it and an image, basically anything you've got is going to skew. Can you imagine what that looks like when you have an accordion? Hmm. Um, Right, now, here's the one I'm really excited about, horizontal and vertical. I'm gonna drop into here a image, like so. And we are just gonna pick, um, let's just go for, um, let's just go for this image here of this person breakdancing. <laughs> right, okay, so they're doing some breakdancing and flipping. Now, normally, if I wanted to show that the other way around, I would have to load up a copy of that image into my media library. And then in media library, I would use the uh, editing functionality to flip it or rotate it or whatever I want. Can I now click on this image? Okay, go to transform and flip it horizontally. I mean, look at that. Flip it vertically. Wow. I mean, I'm not sure if that's how you want to be standing, dude. But this is super, super good, right? Just like that. I'm flipping things around. And like I said, you could go to hover and I could flip it so that when you hover over it, I mean, there is that... I mean, you got. I think you got to be a bit careful about the stutter effect because, like, it seems to want to do it as long as you put your mouse over a certain angle. However, I do like the fact that you can. Now, I mean, I'm probably not going to use the hover as much, but the normal beauty. I like it. Right. Let's move on to the next feature. This one is the um, text stroke. And for those of you out there, there's a bit of code you can add in where it gives you a basically it's the outline of your text. So you might put a header in. And instead of having a color for the text, you now have an outline color. This is meant to be really, really simple. At the moment, you can only do this on icon box, tabs. Um, sorry, um, text stroke will be, well, at the moment, you can only do it on headers, but it will be available on icon box, tabs, accordion, and text paths as well. And eventually on uh, other um, widgets as well. To be honest, I'm only interested in the text and the tabs not the text and types, the text and the header, because I think that's where it's the most powerful when you have a header and you've got the outline text there. I'm not overly sure I would use it on accordion and things like that, unless you really, really wanted to. So again, let's just take the text header that we got at the moment. We go to content, it's not there. We go to style and we will now see over here text stroke. So if I click that, in fact, what I'm gonna first do is get rid of the color that we have here. So it's completely blank. We then go to the text stroke and I'm now going to give it a, ah, look at that. So I'm now giving it an outline and I can be really, I mean, what, I mean, if I go for one, can I do 0 0.5? You can do 0 0.5. I'm not sure how different that is from one. I think it is a bit different, wasn't it? Yeah. So I can go for a really faint uh, look there. I can overgo with a bit bigger. I can also affect the color as well. So this is now doing everything I would have done with CSS coding. And again, I think this is brilliant. Seriously, seriously brilliant. What about text editor though? Can we do it on there as well? So if we go to text editor and we go to style, maybe not, maybe not. So we've got transform, that, which is just transform, but it is not there at the moment. So I would have liked to have seen it over here as well, um, just in case you wanted to do it. But then I suppose you could just use the header uh, in terms of that. So I'm just gonna check here at the moment. And in terms of instructions, they do they do talk about the header here at the moment, but it doesn't seem to be in the text editor. Now, while we've got the text up here, we might as well do the next one, which is word spacing. And I think this is going to be a great one. Uh, and you'll know what I mean in a moment. Let me just change this to be uh, 25 in terms of sizing. We'll give it a darker color of black there as well. Now, normally, when you're doing your text, you will do some like line spacing, uh, such as over here, typography, line height, letter spacing. And the trouble I always had with letter spacing is that if you started to do that, it did everything. It wasn't just, 
it, well, it basically did the spacing between the letters and sometimes it looked a little bit odd. If we just put this back to standard, okay, I can now do word spacing. So if I now drag this, it's if, you, I mean, you don't want to overdo it because it's going to look a bit odd on your website, right? But if you do it very carefully, you can now increase the spacing between your wording, but not actually do your letter spacing. So before you might have been doing like double spacing, maybe, or triple spacing between your letters. You don't have to do that now. This is going to kind of like, again, this is just a great functionality, I think. I think I've got to say hats off to them because I know there are, I know there's going to be people out there that are going to say, well, I don't see the point of that at all. You know, well, yeah. I quite frankly, I don't care. And if you want to dislike the video, dislike it. But I think some of these little things just add a little bit of individuality and uniqueness as to what designers, developers, and everyone on this world and outer space can do with Elemental. Again, great feature. Now then, this is one that has got me a bit excited as well. Have you ever had a website? Well, of course you got a website, but you got tons of widgets on your page, right? And then you decide you want to delete things and you got to go in individually one by one by one to delete. I'm just going to duplicate this, duplicate this again like that. And normally what you would do is you would go to your navigator and you would individually duplicate, not duplicate, delete. What if I now click on that text box? I'm using a MacBook Air, by the way, so I'm going to use the command function. If you're on a PC Windows, you'd use the control. I'm going to put my finger on command and I'm going to click on the header and I'm going to click on the text box over here and I'm going to click on this header as well. And if I right click and I hit, well, look, let me do it again. All right just to prove to you I am doing this properly. I'm going to click on this header, well, command, click on the header, click on this text box, and then click on this header. So I've now clicked on three items. If I right click, it says here, delete three items. Can you see that? Delete three items. I now delete. The header, the text, and the header have disappeared. I mean, that is just, that just speeds things up. The fact I can now do that on the fly, I mean, before I'd have to do it, and whenever I was recording a video, I'd have to move myself out the way and then hit, hit the delete button or whatever. This just speeds things up immensely for me, okay? I'm going to undo, undo, undo. So again, I think that is a great, great feature in terms of speeding things up. And the next one really um, is favorite widgets. Um, I don't like to use a lot of third-party plugins just because of the way I am. However, if there will be some features in Elemental Pro or WooCommerce or whatever, which you use all the time, okay? You know, header, text, it might be forms, there might be something you use. And often you're having to scroll down to get to them. What if heading is my favorite widget? Of course it is, we all use it. I'm gonna right click on heading and it says add to favorites. And look, it now appears over here. So we now have a tab or an area called favorites. I'm now gonna to go to video, let's add that as well. Let me scroll down and go, ooh, let's go for Lottie. Let's add that as well. So now in my favorites at the top, I have not removed it. Heading is still present in its normal area. I now have another section and I could easily right click it and remove, remove and remove again as well. So now if there are certain widgets you use all the time, it's very easy, okay, just to make a point. When you start doing like um, add, um, custom add to cart, this is what you wanna use if you're using dynamic tags, when you're adding the cart to a page, you want to link it to a product. It's very easy for you to use the wrong cart widget and then go, oh, I didn't need that one. It was something else. Well, now you can favorite it. So the ones you use, that's part of your core, you know, your, your portfolio of how you like to build things, they can now be in the favorites tab. Come on, we're talking about efficiency here for you all. I don't know why I say you all, because I'm a user just like you. I have no control over this, but Hats off Elementor, I like this feature here. Now here's the one, dragging from the screen. Okay, just think about this right now. Normally you add a image or a video or a, a Lottie or an icon or whatever to your media library, right? That's totally fine. Um, but what if you can now just add it directly onto Elementor? And when you do that, it will then add it to your media library as well. Now I will say one thing about this. I like to, you'll see videos about this in my previous video catalog. I like to use bulk resize photos.com. So I put all of my images in there 
and it and it kind of like you know compresses them down to WebP format. Yes, I know some people love WebP, some people hate it. You make your own decision over what you want to do. The point I'm getting to is by me compressing into WebP before I add it to Media Library means I don't have to have any additional com image compression plugins or kit on my website. Okay, I don't need to worry about that because I've already done it. And if you're going to start adding images to your media library, I would say that you're better to have done all your compression and every conversion, whatever, before you drag it on. Because if you drag it on, I do not know yet whether your compression conversion WebP plugin will then convert it afterwards. I don't know about that. However, that's not how I do things, so I'm just going to do it the way I do. So I'm going to go over here, and I am now going to drag onto here a image. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and I'm just going to drag on a image. What about something like this one here? Case study two, whatever it is. I'm going to pick it up, and can you see as I've picked it up? It's literally allowing me to drop it. This you could not do before with Elementor. So I'm now just going to drop it here, and you know, just an example. Hey, I want to be the top of page one. Yet, yeah, so does everybody else. You know, have you thought about everything else you got to do? So right now, that has now dropped on. And I, again, I've got all my functionality that I would normally do within Elementor. It is an image. Let's just now go to our media library. The image is there. Okay, and that image, it's, I mean, this is just a PNG. I have not got any conversion kit software on here at the moment. So I don't know if it will do. Anyone out there, if it does, please put a comment. Let everybody know if it handles it. I have a suspicion that you might want to do all your conversion and compression, whatever, in a bulk size, bulk resize photos.com or whatever other website, tiny PNG or whatever you want to use, and then drop it in. But bulk resize photos does convert it into WebP for you. So you don't have to do tiny PNG and then take it elsewhere. It does it all for you. Right. I honestly am going to say that I am loving what Elementor have done. And I really hope that if there are any tweaks, they do whatever tweaks they need to. But this just made things a million times more efficient. And I love it. I love it. I really love it. This is great. So I can't wait to have this actually accessible for everyone to use. I mean, you're going to have to make sure you got Elementor Pro if you really want to get the best out of Elementor. So please make sure you go and get Elemental Pro. Hey, look, I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I shall see you soon.